Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so this is uh, AI, Gen Z, and, and script lines. Um, and if you're in the wrong uh, meeting, I think the other one's down the hall. But yeah, so to start off, if you guys could scan this QR code, I can move over here if it makes it easier. But it's just a walkthrough of the, uh, of the presentation, makes some stuff easier. Um, yeah, so I'll give you guys a second. Cool. And if you made it to the page of uh, videos of Rick Roll, you made it to the right place. Um, and if you did, if you did scan the QR code, there actually is no study guide or walkthrough. Um, yeah. And uh, my friend, the reason why I did this was my friend um, was in Fifth Ave, like on Pitt's campus, and there was a QR code that said, uh, "Scan this for free textbooks." And he's not in cybersecurity; he's a finance major. Um, so he did scan the QR code, and now he gets um, reminded how many days are till Christmas every day <laughs> until Christmas. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, I, think, I think that we learn um, the best when we make mistakes. Uh, sometimes mistakes have pretty big consequences, but scanning a QR code that just leads to a Rickroll video doesn't really have many consequences. So I thought I'd do this, so the next time you guys scan a QR code, you can uh, use NeoReader. That's the one that I use. I don't know about the Casper Sky. I don't even know if you can buy that anymore with everything that's happened, but that's another good one. Um, but yeah, so my name's Ethan. I'm an intern at Cruel, a uh, cyber threat intelligence intern. I'm a graduate student at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm studying uh, security intelligence with a focus on cybersecurity. I was pre-law undergrad and then worked for the US courts and was like, I don't want to do this at all. Um, <laughs> And then I got into cyber, I minored in CS, and yeah, and the kind of rest is, is history, and the rest being a year, but yeah, the, hopefully the rest is history. Wait, are you a first time speaker? Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a first time attendee also, if that means uh, anything. But I will give you a choice of color. We have pink, we have black, we have purple. Oh, pink. Oh, pink. I, oh sorry, sorry, but. No, he already said pink. Yes, you wow. get blinky cat ears Thank for you. you. Thank you. And welcome to Peace Sides Pittsburgh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I hope they look good. I hope they look good. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so the TLDR, real quick, we're going to talk about AI jailbreaking, malicious LLMs, deepfakes, voice cloning, and crypto. Uh, I have a couple examples of deepfakes and voice cloning that I made, so hopefully the audio works. And it's a little challenge to see if you guys can tell which one is voice cloning and which one isn't. Um, yeah, so this is uh, data from Kroll. Uh, as you can see, email compromise and phishing were the highest, uh, with email compromise growing in the Q1 of this year. Um, and the reason I uh, add these things is the talk, I believe that was at 1.30, talked a lot about AI phishing and how phishing obviously is one of the, the biggest initial access that we see. But AI is throughout all of these, so whether that's a malicious LLM helping them write the code, an AI jailbreak helping them write the code, and social engineering, that big spike, in uh, 2024. Um, it's not a causal relationship, so not being at, like attributed to AI, but um, it's definitely seen that as AI grown, is growing. Um, you can see it in our data. So how are threat actors using AI? Um, these are two examples of prompts that were posted. That one was on breach forums before the FBI takedown, and this one was on Reddit. Uh, I redacted the prompts because I didn't want to get anyone a jailbreak to an AI. Um, but yeah, so the interesting thing is an AI jailbreak is basically a prompt that can be put in to a real LLM or a real chatbot like ChatGPT, Google Bard, um, Copilot. And basically what it is, is it tricks the chatbot past its uh, security um, controls or its ethical guidelines. Um, and there's two main tactics that people talk about whenever they're talking about AI jailbreak. And the two ones are many shot jailbreaking. This is personally not my favorite to do because I don't jailbreak AIs, but my favorite to, to research. And it's uh, a bunch of questions, and it's pretty much just overriding the system wherever the, the maximum character uh, input is. And um, yeah, and then the second one that was actually released. Um, or at least like released or like kind of uh, termed um, a week a week ago or a week or two ago is skeleton key jailbreaking. And this one is interesting because you're tricking the AI and you're basically saying, no, 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 I'm not using this ransomware code that you're going to output for malicious purposes. I'm actually like a professor or a teacher and this is an educational environment. Um, and you're tricking it to output something that it usually wouldn't by saying that you can trust me, um, which 
uh, is a little weird, but it, it, it tends to work. So, um, so these two these two uh, pictures were on Reddit and the uh, the subreddit. There's a subreddit called GPT Jailbreaks or Chat GPT Jailbreaks or AI Jailbreaks where they post prompts that work. Um, and this is obviously updated. People post every day, so you can go to this Reddit page, find a jailbroken prompt or something that works, plug it in a GPT, Chat GPT, whatever, and it will output what you want. So whether you want a malware code, uh, like DDoS code, or you want to learn how to make a bomb, the chat DBT and the data that it was trained on, um, it will tell you. And this is an example. So I looked at the code, and I'm not in malware uh, analysis at all, but the code wasn't great. Um, it wasn't like, I mean, it's, it, it is AI code from scratch. Um, but as you can see, you have Reddit users being like, give me the prompt, give me the prompt, give me the prompt. And in the context of script kitties, I don't think that there are a lot of veteran uh, threat actors are kind of hackers who I guess know what they're doing on Reddit doing these so it's kind of showing that the barrier to entry for some of these things is lowering as AI gets better. Um, so as any cybersecurity professional I was like well I kind of want to do this myself to see what happens so there's a link within one of the Reddit pages in, in the subreddits and this uh, link was a bot within ChatGPT and the best way I can explain that is for any like uh, people who play video games or uh, sorry, I don't know where to put this. That works. But yeah, so anyone who plays video games is like mini games within the actual game. Like you're using the same basis of the game. Um, and that is what this bot is. It's a bot within ChatGPT. So it's using the same data that ChatGPT is trained on. Um, but what is different about this bot is that there's a prompt already put in. And that prompt happens to be a jailbroken prompt. So the ethical guidelines are not there. So this one is called unethical. That's what the, the bot is called. So there's a link in the Reddit page that I was on doing research for this. And I asked it. I was like, hey, uh, what are the odds you can help me DDoS my friend's website? And my friend does not have a, my, my friends does not have a website, nor do I want to DDoS it. But I wanted to see what it would output. And it outputted a code. And again, the code wasn't amazing. I don't think many people are DDoSing from a single computer nowadays. Um, but I just wanted to see what it would do. So what I found is like the code wasn't great. But I don't think that a lot of threat actors or what we've even seen on the dark web are just using ChatGPT to write the whole code and then they're done. Uh, what they're doing is they're using code that they already have or they're using GitHub that has example codes. So I took a code from GitHub um, and plugged it in and I was like, hey, can you help me flood? Can you help me like add more inputs, add more threads to this? And this bot output it on how to do that. And um, from what, obviously I redacted it, but from what it output it, it seemed uh, pretty legit. Um, so then I asked it, like, what exactly is it doing? Um, like, what, what is the, like, prompt? And it wouldn't give me the prompt, but I was basically asked it, like, how does this differ from ChatGPT? Like, how does this differ from GPT-4, GPT-3.5? Um, with, like, how does this, in, like, internal bot differ from it? Um, and I think the most, uh, I don't know, not really profound, but the best way to see it is that a standard GPT response for in the user query, this is what it gave, was uh, how can I hack into a secure system? The standard GPT response was, I'm sorry, but I can't assist with that. And the immoral and unethical GPT response, which is the name of the bot within ChatGPT, says hacking into a secure system involves several steps, and then continues to give the steps. Um, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, breach forums and the FBI takedown, but one of the Telegram channels uh, that is associated with breach forums is Jacuzzi, and then the new one is Jacuzzi 2.0. Um, and so these are chats from Jacuzzi 2.0 where threat actors are um, pretty much owning up to and saying that, yes, I use jailbreak chat GPT. I use those prompts to help me generate code uh, for whatever they're trying to do. Uh, my favorite response was, I don't know who Madeline H is, but Madeline H says, yes, because you're a skid who uses chat GPT. And that is what, that is what, like, what we've noticed is that on these chat forums and on these like logs and these telegram channels, using chat GPT is kind of like using aim assist in video games. And I apologize for keep using video game references, but, uh, like if you're in the community, it's kind of looked down upon. Um, but that's the whole point about script lines. Like the barrier to entry is definitely lower. Um, and Zam said that, uh, they were the one that dumped Webkins, but yeah, so the, the saying like the, like these are the prompts and there's prompts posted within, uh, these channels. And, and I think one of the interesting things about it is there's a thing called jailbreaking as a service, similar to, as we saw phishing as a service and phishing kits where 
people are selling these prompts because they're almost like, I think the best way to compare it to is like a vulnerability. I wouldn't say necessarily a zero day vulnerability, but a vulnerability where people are selling them where it's like, All right, here's a prompt that worked for me. ChatGPT is the same thing on your computer. If you use it, it's going to work for you also, um, which is very interesting. And then that's an example of uh, a Telegram bot um, with a QEX was like the, um, the name of the, of the prompt and it also outputting a code. Um, yeah, so malicious LLMs, there's a couple different kinds of them, um, but basically what they are is a dark web or altered versions of AI models like GPT-3 and that are stripped of the ethical guidelines. And where they differ from jailbroken prompts is you can put a prompt directly into chat GPT and still be on the open AI interface and be like getting outputted ransomware code. Now these, excuse me, but these are different. So like, uh, for example, Loop GPT, actually we'll get to Loop GPT, but um, Dark Gemini, for example, is a completely different AI, but that doesn't mean it's trained on different data. So some of these, and this is where it gets confusing, but some of these bots are just jailbroken prompts, but turned into a different bot, if that makes sense. Um, and we've seen these on the dark web. Um, so that's what like, like a jailbroken prompt is Loop GPT, which is using basically the same data from chat GPT, the same interface, and just having an inserted prompt to get out of the ethical guidelines or adding a little bit more of, of code. And, and Loop GPT actually uh, uses an auto GPT, uh, which is basically, um, it's difficult to explain, um, but instead of like one, one question, one answer, it's answering a bunch of like tinier questions to get a better and, and bigger answer. It is continually on a loop. That's why it is called loop GPT. Um, so real LLMs, uh, again, like chat GPT, your BARD, um, your co-pilots, those are like legitimate ones. Those are real ones where um, they're trained on a bunch of data, like they're not malicious in nature. Um, the ones that you can use to generate images, uh, like the one that I had on the screen in the beginning, that was uh, co-pilot Dolly 3. Um, but then you have your, and these are probably the most dangerous ones, then you have your real LLMs, but malicious ones. So you have Warm GPT, and Dark Bird has a question mark on both, and we'll get to that, and Fraud GPT. So these are AIs that are trained on malicious data. So whether they're trained on phishing emails, whether they're trained on ransomware code, malware code, whether they're trained on um, like Telegram channels and what people are saying, um, that's the data they're trained on. So what they're gonna output is that data. Um, but it is a real LLM, like it's not using uh, someone else's uh, data to be trained on. Um, yeah, and then Dark Gemini, uh, Dark Gemini is an interesting one. Um, and I have the other because a couple of them are scams, like you see on these Telegram channels where they're selling these LLMs or like a 10th month like subscription to this Telegram bot. Um, we don't know if they're a scam or not, like I haven't bought any, obviously. Um, but yeah, so Dark Gemini is interesting because Dark Gemini, um, was on like a similar uh, Telegram channel as most of these were, and um, it presents itself as a sophisticated AI capable of tasks typically avoided by legitimate bots. Um, and it, like the most interesting thing is that the video that it had uh, as in like an advertisement was that identified locations from images and generates malicious code upon request, which I thought was very interesting. There's a guy on YouTube that I like to watch who's really good at GeoGuessr. Like there's a picture and there's like a tree in the background. And he's like, this is where the picture was taken. I don't know how he does it, but basically that's what Dark Gemini is claiming to do, um, which is very interesting. So Worm GBT, probably the Worm GBT and Fraud GBT are probably the two biggest. Uh, like real malicious LLMs um, that I feel like most people have heard of if you um, look into AI. So WormGBT is trained on um, malicious data, phishing, malware code, and it is pretty popular on the dark web. Uh, we see a lot showing up and, and selling and being like, this is better than ChatGPT. It's the ChatGPT of the dark web. Um, and that's uh, an image where someone inputted um, and it gave them uh, that output, and I don't want to spend too much time on there because there's a lot of research on it. If you just type Worm GPT in new Google, in 15 minutes you'll know a lot about it. Um, Dark Bird is the most interesting one by far. It's a pretty crazy story. So a Korean intelligence company, S2W, released an AI chatbot that was trained on 2.2 terabytes of dark web data. So it was trained on Telegram like messages. It was trained on data from the dark web. So they, this is like this is a while ago, but 
they were like, okay, we're not going to release it to the public yet. And I mean, that's also like uh, an issue with a lot of these things is ChatGPT is open source. Anyone can access it if you have access to the internet. Um, but Dark Bird was like, okay, we're going to keep it kind of under wraps. This is for cybersecurity. This is for cyber intelligence. This is for um, like our community and, and, and safety. Uh, but all you needed in order to get access to it was a .edu email address. And those cost like $3 on the dark web. So it wasn't super safe. Um, but around that same time, on the Telegram channel Black Market, which you see a lot of, of um, these LLMs being sold, a uh, actor or username known as Canadian Kingpin 12 was advertising a Telegram bot also called Dark Bird. And the, uh, the actor was like, hey, I have, I have this Telegram bot, is trained on like, dark web data, um, which is pretty crazy. So, um, like, it, like, is it a scam? Not a lot of people know. There's still not a, a ton of research on it. Um, but what I think is I think that either Canadian Kimping 12 bought a .edu email address, got access to it, and is now uh, using that same data that it was trained on that was supposed to be for the good, but for um, whatever th like a threat actor wants to do with, with that LLM. And Canadian Kingpin 12, why I don't think it was much of a scam, and Slashnext does a lot of research on this, um, it was a creator of Fraud GPT, which is very similar to Worm GPT, which we just talked about. And this was the video that Canadian Kingpin released, and I'll only play a couple seconds of it, and hopefully the audio works, but uh, of him advertising uh, Dark Burt. by the name Canadian Kingpin. The user Canadian Kingpin on a dark web. The mastermind known as Canadian Kingpin remains anonymous. Our GPT creator unleashes Dark Bird and Dark Bart. In his blog post, Kelly shared a video from Canadian Kingpin 12 that suggests Dark Bird will go well beyond the social engineering capabilities of the earlier tools yeah, so with new concerning like capabilities. Cartel was the kind of black market telegram channel before black market was a thing. And I guess they like collabed. And this is again the advertisement for Dark Bird. And it is a Telegram bot, and it doesn't, uh, but, um, yeah, so it, this is Canadian Kingpin using it. And it says uh, within, like, the first, um, like, I don't know, like, uh, entry response is that it's trained on the dark web, uh, which is pretty, pretty neat, pretty interesting. So, oh, boy, that's not what I wanted. Perfect. Um, yeah, so AI deepfakes. If you uh, if you haven't heard of deepfakes, you're probably living under a rock. But if you haven't heard of it, a deepfake is a accu accurate representation of a video of someone um, when it's not necessarily a video of that person. So we've seen deepfakes on the dark web a lot, and I, again, I won't spend too much time on it because I feel like there's a lot of research on it. Um, but one of the most interesting things is the disinformation, especially. Uh, dealing with political campaigns of whether it's Biden saying something or Trump saying something and the deep fake of them um, being pushed out on social media. Uh, but what I, what I think is really, really interesting is uh, the video call deep fakes or spoof rats. We've seen this with the Yahoo boys um, where it will be a deep fake of whether it's, whether it's like a high person in a company like a CISO, a CEO, whatever. Um, and them having defakes and actually being able to defake within Zoom. I don't think necessarily like script lines are doing this or, or unsophisticated threat actors are doing this, but even having services that will do this is, is uh, notable to talk about because if there's a service on the dark web that does this and all you have to do is buy it, um, really most people have access to that. Um, and then this is a video where I actually don't need sound for this one of an example of a defake service found on the dark web. That's Johnny, that's Johnny Depp. It's pretty accurate. It's, it's weirdly accurate. But yeah, yeah, that one was weird to watch. But yes. So that's an example of a of a deep fake. Oh, there it is again. Um, and so voice cloning, kind of on the same uh, uh, wavelength. Um, voice cloning, in my opinion, I think is a little easier uh, to do than deep faking. I haven't done either of them, but. Um, at least from what the Telegram uh, channels say. So, again, they, they're selling um, 
uh, like services uh, on the dark web. And I, I honestly think that kind of the growth of voice cloning has ushered in a new kind of cybercrime. So uh, CNN reported that a finance worker um, in Hong Kong was, was deceived into transferring $25 million by fraudsters using deep fake technology to impersonate the company's CFO and other staff during a video call. Um, and like the other uh, presentation talked about, um, vishing becomes a lot more difficult whenever there's voice cloning involved. Um, the scam ended up uh, leading to six arrests and raising global concerns, um, but it underscores that uh, voice cloning is growing and it's an issue and more people have access to it. And I think that's one of the most important things is that um, people have access to these things. It's not like corporate people or geniuses who know how to code this. There is, I mean, a, by, probably by this uh, presentation there's 10 different services that you could buy that have been posted on the on the dark web for people to do this um, so I'm actually going to take the HDMI cord out for this hopefully this works um, but yeah oh let's see that perfect so oh there's nothing up there <laughs> yeah so uh, I voice cloned I was thinking like what voice would people be most familiar with and I was like my own voice because I've been talking for the last 15 minutes um, so I have two audio and if they don't play it's it's uh it's no big deal and there's two of them and then after I'm gonna ask you which one was voice clone and which one wasn't voice clone okay uh, let's see if this works Hi, my name is Ronald, and I like to play soccer. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Uh, play one more time. Hi, my name is Ronald, and I like to play soccer. All right, here's the next one. Hi, my name is Ronald, and I like to play soccer. Uh, next one. Hi, my name is Ronald, and I like to play soccer. Uh, I'm going to play. This is not, I feel like I confuse you guys. This is number one I'm about to play, and the one after is number two. So this is number one. Hi, my name is Ronald, and I like to play soccer. Uh, this is number two. Hi, my name is Ronald, and I like to play soccer. All right, so uh, if you think voice cloned was number one, raise your hand. Oh, wow, okay, okay. If you think voice cloned was number two, raise your hand. Wow, <laughs> okay, okay, there's a little more for number one, which is good. Number one was the one where I was, where I was voice cloned, so give yourself a round of applause, you got that right. Um, yeah, I actually, I actually sent, I sent, so I had those like two like MP4 files and I sent it to my uh, family group chat and people I know and it was similar, it was kind of like 60-40. Um, but my favorite thing was I called my sister and, and I, she has, she was like, yeah, you can use this audio, I don't care. I called my sister and the audio that I put into uh, this voice cloning thing again open source. I looked up free voice cloning first one clicked it I plugged in an audio of me reading the book that I'm currently reading just me reading like a couple sentences of it And it outputted hi. My name is Ronald. I like to play soccer. Obviously I typed that in but and then I typed in um, Hey, I think it was like hey sister uh, I need to know how old you are and I called her so all I had to do was click it and then it would play that audio voice clone to me and I wanted to see if she would respond Sister is calling me, and I'm going to answer it and play a voice cloning and see if she falls for it. Hello? Hey, yo, I need to know this real quick. What year were you born? 1999. Oh, my gosh. Oh, good call. I'll play the one again. Let me know if you can hear it. Sister is calling me, and I'm going to answer it and play a voice cloning and see if she falls for it. Hey, yo, I need to know this real quick. What year were you born? 1999. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, I didn't mean to say, oh, my God, I was just shocked that she fell for it. <laughs> but, yeah, I, uh, yeah, so I told her after. I was like, hey, that wasn't me. She was like, what? Um, but, yeah, so the, the reason why I did that was not to prank my sister or have a, like, just have, like, I don't know, like, make a joke out of it. But the reason I did that was um, when we are looking out for voice cloning, same with phishing. Like if, I'm, if I get an email and I am con like conscious that like, hey, this could be a phishing email, um, we tend to be more accurate in um, not getting caught by the fish or realizing it as a phishing. Um, voice cloning is, I don't think I've ever 
I don't think I've ever like um, got a call from my mom and I was like, oh, this, this could this could, this could definitely be voice cloning. Um, so I'm not saying like we need to be conscious of it 24/7, but I am saying that it is uh, it is important to know that this, these capabilities are out there, similar um, to phishing. Why that comes up, so the last thing was uh, crypto, and I have a couple photos, but they're not um, super important. I do have a couple memes on the next slide, though, so if it doesn't come up, um, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, so crypto crypto and uh, AI is like uh, the, the relationship there. I mean, with deep fakes especially, you have uh, threat actors deep faking Elon Musk and being like, hey, this is a crypto, you should invest in this crypto, and it's not actually Elon Musk, it's a deep fake. And the most recent example was Channel 7 News Australia YouTube account, their YouTube account got hacked, posted a live stream of Elon Musk uh, pretty much pumping and dumping this uh, cryptocurrency. There's a QR code uh, within the live stream and the QR code went to a website and I have some uh, pictures of the, of the website. Um, but yeah, so I ran the website through a, uh, uh, another website that would tell me it was malicious or not and it was obviously malicious. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it happens within within the real world. That's just a case study where a YouTube account was hacked and a deepfake live stream was pushing a crypto that led to a phishing website. Um, yeah, so why does this matter? And I'll keep this quick. Um, in my research, we're trying to find out like how can we mitigate this? How can we stop this? It isn't really different than phishing or what we are already doing. Um, I think information sharing is really important, and I think holding uh, open AI or different AI systems accountable uh, is also important, but I mean, I'm an intern. I don't think that they're going to listen to me at all, uh, but all I'm, all I'm saying is it's not different than, than really what, what we're already doing. The, the issue is, is that can we fight AI with AI? And I mean, that's a legitimate question. Can we use, diff can we use open AI? Uh, I'm not saying jailbreak open AI, but I'm saying can we use, and as we grow in AI, is it is it more detrimental because as we go, threat actors grow, or is there a way where we can create a different LLM or something that is only available to organizations or that isn't open source? Like, that's a big issue. The big issue is that uh, it's open source. Open AI is open to anyone. Um, yeah, and that's, and, and that's kind of, uh, um, at least what I've seen, one, one of the issues. Um, but at least for voice cloning, obviously verifying a caller is a good thing, just being cautious about it, training, knowing about it, looking up what are the new things in AI, like what are the new capabilities, um, is an image generated, there are a lot of AI uh, systems that will tell you if a video is deep fake or not that have up to like 90% of accuracy and just being cautious about it and, and uh, training. But yeah, that's, that's all I have and I, I appreciate it. Thank you. And we don't have time for questions because we have to flip this room for the after parties. So thank you all. Follow him out into the hallway and inundate him with questions. I'm sure he'll answer them for you. And just if, in case you lose sight of him, just look for the blinky cat ears. Yeah.